Hey everyone, it's been a while, but I'm back in Blender and today I'll show you how I made this. Let's get straight into it. Like always, let's get started with the mesh. First select everything with A and delete the default cube with X and then shift A to create a cube. Go to modifier and add a subdivision modifier to the cube, increase subdivisions to two, then hit apply. Add another subdivision modifier without applying it this time. Tab into edit mode, Turn on wireframe mode and proportional editing. So each command has some influence on the points around it and start pulling everything into shape. Add a mirror modifier to the main body, so the limbs and eyes get copied over. Create another cube for the eyes, again adding the subdivision modifier. Move it into place and join it to the body with Control J. For the arms, create another cube and add the subdivision modifier again. In edit mode, extrude the arm with E, then extrude out the fingers. Create some loop cuts with Control R. Join the arm to the body. Do the same for the legs. For the pupil, create a UV sphere, move it to the eye, flatten it in edit mode. Add a mirror modifier, set mirror object to the main body. Separate the limbs from the body with P in edit mode. Apply the mirror modifiers for the mesh and then parent the pupils to the main body with control P so that it follows the head. To smooth out the surface, right click and choose shade smooth. Now let's move on to actually rigging the character. Shift A to create an armature. Under viewport display, check in front. Tab into edit mode and adjust the rig like a normal mesh. We'll only be making the armature for one leg, then duplicating it for the other limbs. Turn on X-ray, select the endpoint and press G to move it around, then extrude another bone with E. The second bone will now be parented to the first. Rename this collection to IK as we'll be creating more later. At the knee, extrude out a bone for the IK target, then Alt P to clear parent. Move it forward a bit. Extrude out another bone at the feet, again clearing the parent. In pose mode, select the foot, then shift, select the shin. Press shift I to add IK. Select the armature, then the target bone. This controls which direction the IK bends. If the legs don't bend, just go into edit mode and move the knee a teeny tiny bit forward. You may also need to adjust the pole angle of the IK. For mine, 180 works. That's it for the IK part. If you're not looking for anything complex like stretchy bones, just parent the mesh to the bone with automatic weights. As you can see, the mesh now follows the rigs. Now moving on to deforming bones. Add another collection and name it DEF. You can click the eyes to show only the rig you are working on. In edit mode, shift A to create a bone, move it to place and extrude more. The smaller bones are later used for controls of the deforming bones. I made a little mistake here and forgot to add the small bone at the top like this.
Here, I changed the shape of the bone to B bone for cleaner visuals. The size of these is adjustable through Shift Control Alt S or under armature, right click to add scale B bone to quick access. Press Q for quick access. Select all controls now and press Alt P to clear their parent. Back in pose mode, select the control, shift select the bone above it and add stretch to with shift control C. Do the same for all the other parts. Now we are going to parent the DF controls to the IK rig, so when the IK rig moves, all the bones follow. Select the controls, then shift select the IK rig and parent with control P. For smoother noodle-like bones, under bendy bones increase segments to 5. Choose the start and end index of that bone. Turn on scale on the X and Z axis. To get rid of scaling issues, switch inherits to none. Do the same for the other bones as well. I also moved the IK control to the heel and added a rig for the foot under DF. then parented it to the end control. Now let's add another collection for the controls. By selecting those bones, adding a collection, hitting a sign, and then removing them from DF. Hold down Alt and turn off Deform for all of them so they won't affect the mesh later. Also do the same for all the IK bones as the only bones changing the mesh should be the DF bones. Then duplicate this for the arm. Thankfully, the arm is a very similar shape. In edit mode, select all the bones, shift D to duplicate, rotate on Y axis by minus 90 and match it to the arm. You can also pull out a few more rigs for the fingers. Now select all the rigs, and at the top, under Armature, choose Auto Name. This will add a dot .l to the end of the names for all the bones. Then under Armature again, click Symmetrize, and as you can see, all the bones are now copied over. For the main body rig, just create a single bone in IK Collection, and parent the base bones to it. Make sure that the chain length for the IK bones is set to 2 and not 0. Here, I realized my mistake from earlier, and fixed it by duplicating the control bones for each limb, then parenting the bone below to it. Now moving on to parenting the mesh to the rigs. Let's first join all the mesh to the main body with Control J. Select that mesh and shift select the rig, then control P parent with automatic weights. Now in pose mode, you can see the mesh following the rig. Here you can see that one of the weights is not assigned correctly, but that's an easy fix. For any mismatches, select the rig, shift select the mesh and go into weight painting mode. Hold down control shift to select a bone and you can see the mesh parented to it. You can either use the brush or what I like to do, tab into edit mode, select the part you want to remove or assign, shift L to deselect. And at the side, hit remove. Control shift select the other bone, tab into edit mode and hit assign. Now the weights are reassigned. I also added some rigs for the eyes, because why not? Duplicate the bone with Symmetrize by adding a dot .l after the name. Then parent the pupils to the bones with Control p Also, make sure to apply the mirror modifier. Now adjust the weights as shown before.
uh, this is optional, but if you want to add a bit of stretch to your mesh, change IK stretch to 0.1 or something around that for each IK bone. Usually you would create another set of bones for forward kinematics, but for this, I will just be doing that by controlling the influence on each IK bone to switch between the two modes. For example, after turning the influence all the way down to zero, the bones no longer follow the IK and can be controlled manually, like so. Now onto the material. Switch to viewport shading and change timeline to the shader editor. First, let's change the background by changing the world color. Back in object, add a material. Shift A to create a shader to RGB and a color ramp. Just drop them in to be connected automatically. Set the color to constant and adjust the color. At the side, under materials, duplicate the body material and create another for the eyes. Add this material to the eye mesh. To make this guy less creepy, tab into edit mode, select the eyeballs with L, duplicate the material, adjust the color to white, and hit assign. Shift A to create a grease pencil with line art. This creates a grease pencil object with a line art modifier. Before that, make sure to add a camera. Press N to bring up the side panel under view. Make sure to lock camera to view so the camera view always follows your view. I also added a noise modifier and a dot dash modifier. These are the final settings I have for them. I also added a displacement modifier to the mesh to make it look more hand-drawn. Create a new texture and set strength to 0.05 and mid-level to 0.411. Open the texture to edit it. Change type to cloud. Feel free to adjust any settings to what you prefer. Uh, for the mouse, shift A to create a blank grease pencil, go into draw mode, make sure you are set to surface up here with offset set to something small like 0.02. You can also adjust the strength and radius of the strokes. Uh, after several failed attempts, you'll get something that looks like a mouth. Um, you can also tab into edit mode to manually adjust each point of the stroke. Now onto animation. Let's parent the mouth to the head. Select the grease pencil, then the armature, and parent with automatic weights. Shift, select the grease pencil again, and go into weight painting. You'll notice it's not properly parented, so just use the brush to adjust the weights until it's all red. All right, finally onto the fun part. Let's move the camera into a easier position. First press N to bring up the side panel and turn off the camera to view. Reset the rotation on the Z axis and position on the X axis so the camera faces the character. Change the shader editor back to the timeline and switch the viewport back so it runs a bit faster. And also switch to pose mode with the armature selected. There are two ways to animate that I'll be showing. You can either select a bone, move, rotate, or scale it, then press K in pose mode to keyframe it on the timeline. The other way is auto keying, which automatically inserts a frame whenever something is changed in the scene. As you can see, a key is created.
turn on auto keying and move the rig into the pose you want. For simple animation like this, if you want the armature to stay in a pose, select all the bones with A, then press K to keyframe location, rotation, and scale. Select the key down below, press Shift D to duplicate it, and now the armature will not move or change between these frames. Uh, by the way, to return to the original state, use Alt S, Alt G, or Alt R. Actual movement works in a similar way. Just spread the keys apart so they are not right next to each other, and you can see the armature slowly move into that pose. You can turn IK on and off by adjusting the influence under bone constraint and clicking the dot to keyframe it as well. This way, you can control the rig with both IK and by manually moving each bone. At the same time, by hiding the IK bones, the controls can be used to further deform and twist the mesh. And honestly, that's pretty much it. Just play around with it to get comfortable and have fun. Here are some animation tips that kind of helped me. Double tapping on X, Y, or Z for some commands to work on the local axis. Play around with control bones. They are good for making wiggly and exaggerated animations. If a mesh looks weird, lumpy elbow, twisted wrist, it's almost always the control bone. Rotate or shift the control bones around. For some scenes, it's nice to exaggerate the size of things, like, like the size of this hand is made larger to appear closer to the camera. You don't always need to keyframe everything. You can copy paste keys from just one bone, like a hand, and duplicate it across the scene with shift D. Also in this scene, I add a copy rotation constraint to the bone deforming the feet so it bees the rotation of the IK bone and remain in place when the body moves around. Um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If so, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. And here's a special thanks to my Patreon supporters.